What's going on guys? I'm in advantage and welcome back to another NHL 22 hut video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Now this one is actually inspired by sleeveless gaming. So shout out to him for the idea. I do love his series and I love team building. I love hut. Obviously I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't. So today's video is going to be a very special one. Not only are we going to go over my team and my current build, but every single week in the comments, I'm going to take all the comments that you have any questions about as far as team building, as far as hut just in general, and I'm going to answer them. So in today's video, we're gonna be diving into what my team looks like right now. Now keep in mind, we're a little bit early on and I'm busy working the market. So my team isn't exactly right where it should be as far as how much I have into the game so far. However, make sure you leave those comments below and you'll be featured in the next video. So before we dive into today's team building video, guys, make sure if you have any questions as far as team build, as really as far as anything in HUD, as I mentioned in the intro, go ahead and ask that in the comments below. Feel free to put any players you might be inquiring about, X Factor choices, really anything in between. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Here's my team right now. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty solid. I've been free to play so far, but let's go ahead and get a little bit more detailed into who we have. So first up here, we have the base Jack Eichel. He does have heart and soul. I don't have that activated, but I certainly do have his wills. Superstar ability activated. It really does make a huge difference for him. Acceleration is an 89 as well as his speed's an 89. His shot is pretty solid, high 80s across the board. Everything else in hands is high 80s. Yeah, this is a very, very solid card. Now, as you can see, he's untradeable. I did pull him out of actually a silver reroll pack, but He's going for about 40K, 30 to 40K, depending on what market you're in right now. So I would definitely recommend picking him up if you do have the coins to do so. Up next is the captain, the leader of the team, my main man, Sidney Crosby. Now don't click out of the video if you're a Crosby hater. <laughs> That's okay if you are, totally understand. But this is a great card, obviously, as well. I pulled him untradeable. I actually pulled him untradeable the first day of EA play, oddly enough. Like, I can't believe it happened. It's never happened to me in NHL, but hey, we will take it. He does have the light lamp synergy, as you can see, I have eight out of five people with that activated. I really do like that for my wingers. And also, hey, it, it, Crosby's a center, but regardless, it does bump up his wrist shot accuracy up to an 88, everything else there is high 80s. He's a little slow, but he's a center, so he can get away with it. His face-offs are an 84, which at this stage of the game, is pretty solid. But one of the things that makes Crosby just unbelievable are his hands. And that's in real life, and that's also in the game. As you can see there, everything's high 90s, especially with light lamp activated. It even makes him better. Offensive awareness is a 94, hand eyes a 96, and everything else is pretty much a 90. Moving on to our right wing is my man, Yammer Yager. I have distributor activated on him, as well as magician, which as you can see, both of those are activated across the board. Now, I do just have his loan card right now for nine days. And the reason I did that is so I could acquire a couple of these other players. I could pick him up right now, but as you see at the top, I have 114,000 coins and I'm busy working the market. So really there's no need for me to go ahead and spend coins or spend players on him right now when I'm busy working the market. So I'll pick him up whenever this expires, but this is who we're gonna have here at the first line winger for probably quite some time. 91 overall, he's one of the best cards in the game. Acceleration, we talked about this yesterday. He's a little slow, but look at his hands and look at his, his balance. 98 balance is unbelievable. His shot is all mid to high 90s. It's almost impossible to take him off the puck. And if you figure it out by now, sort of the meta in this game is to take the puck to the net and play behind the net. And I'll have a strategies video out actually later this weekend that will be going over all my strategies for that. I feel like I figured it out. Um, basically how to play this game versus 21. It's a totally different story, which is great. And that's a welcomed, welcomed change, at least for a lot of people, and at least for, for me personally. But going back to this card, he has ankle breaker as well as unstoppable force. I don't think he needs it. I really don't. Like, I don't think he needs unstoppable force. I don't think he needs ankle breaker because he's not that quick anyway. So I have both of those not activated, but distributor certainly helps him out. 
as well as Magician. Up on the next line, we have Austin Matthews playing the left wing. For now, I don't want to have that forever. Once I upgrade his card, I may change that. We got Nick Suzuki at center and Patty Kane at right wing. So let's go ahead and dive into this. So right now I have Matthews at an 86 overall. I did not upgrade him yet. As you can see, I can do so. But again, I'm busy working the market and I don't think it's of utmost importance right now to upgrade him. I feel like his card's still pretty good at an 86. I may do this later on this weekend, but it is gonna cost quite a bit of power of collectibles to get him up to that 91 overall. But going back to his card as it stands right now, I do have Distributor activated on him, which does make his speed up to an 88. I don't have any of his synergies activated. I did actually play with this shock and off for a little bit. It's good when you can do it, but I at least found in online games, it's pretty tough to get that off. I mean, every once in a while you can get it off and most of the times it doesn't really make that big of a difference, at least for me personally. Now, if you're used to doing that shot where you do the toe drag, sure, by all means, go ahead and use that. But at eight ability points, I just didn't find that it was worth it. A lot of the shooting ones, I just don't find that are worth it, at least the ones that are that expensive. Now, moving on to his card, shooting is pretty much a 90 across the board. Hands are mid 90s or rather low 90s and his face-offs just aren't that great. That's why I have him on the left wing right now. Moving on to Nick Suzuki. Now, this card is criminally underrated, and blame is on me a little bit because yesterday, whenever I was giving my review of this, I wasn't ex you know, really ecstatic about this card, but now that I've played with it, oh my goodness, it's unbelievable. Like, go ahead and pick this up right now. If you haven't already, it's cheap, it's easy to make, especially with the new sets this year. I don't know what you guys think about that, but I personally think it's a game changer and I love what EA did this year with getting rid of those gold collectibles because that was an absolutely abysmal, miserable way to play the game if you know what I'm talking about, NHL 21. So it's nice to see, at least for now, there's no gold collectibles in the game. It's all about players. So he's a cheap pickup. Now let's get into the card. He has Thief activated. I don't have Heart and Soul activated at this time, which I don't think it's huge right now. Make his face offs a little bit better. But this quick draw, advanced quickness on face off draws and increased effectiveness on tie up wins, created defensive zone draws. So I do have him on my power play, especially, which is huge. He can win the draw basically 95% of the time. He's quick, 91 Excel, 91 agility, 90 speed, shot is high 80s, hands are about in the 90s. And at 5'11", 208, he's actually pretty hard to take off the puck for somebody that's a little bit smaller in stature, but he's pretty thick, so I, I really do love this card. It's fantastic. Moving on to Patty Kane. Oh my goodness, I took this card in my X Factor Choice Pack it's unbelievable. Like, if you don't have Patty Kane, pick him up right now. First off, look at his hands. High 90s, 97 offensive awareness, 98 hand eye, passing 96, puck control 97. Now I do obviously have distributor and light the lamp both activated. Makes his wrist shot accuracy at a 95, which is unbelievable, being that the game officially came out yesterday. It's crazy. He's such a good card. 93 acceleration, 91 speed. The only thing I will say is that if he does get hit in his own zone, and people talk about this every once in a while in the NHL, is they could potentially be a liability. That's true, um, but I normally just you just got to get the you just got to move the puck better. You just got to move it out of your zone. I don't have ankle breaker activated, although that is an option for him. However, puck on a string, exceptional toe drag and stick handling speed. When you're breaking in the offensive zone, if you really know how to use card like Patrick Kane it's almost unstoppable, especially with his hands that high and with the synergy activated, or I'm sorry, with his zone ability activated, it, it's a game changer. Pick him up if you don't already. Moving on to our third line, we have Taylor Hall on the left wing. We have Alexander Barkov at center. And lastly, we have Miko Rantanen at right wing. So first look at Taylor Hall. He does have Thief, which for faceoffs, yeah, not that important, but for defensive awareness and stick checking, especially stick checking in this game is extremely important. I love having Thief activated on my team. Acceleration is an 89 as well as speed is a 90. Shot is mid 80s, it's okay, um, but he's a pretty solid card and I just always love the feel of a Taylor Hall or a Matt Duchesne card in NHL. For some reason, those are the two cards for me personally that I just love scoring goals with. They're quick and they're just a lot of fun to use. Up next is Alexander Barkov. He does have Thief activated. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you'll know that I pulled two untradeable team of the week, Alexander Barkovs. So 
I have to put him in my lineup. 6'3", 215. He's a little slow, but he's a big boy. 88 faceoffs too, certainly helps with Thief activated stick checking and defensive awareness are both a 94. He's great on the PK and he's just a nice centerpiece. Lastly, his superstar ability is off the rush. I do like this one. Um, I just don't have it activated and I don't feel that it's necessary, especially with his playing time on the third line. I feel like I don't really have a need to use it. Up next is Miko Rantanen. Now he was my first choice pack option. I do have Light the Lamp as well as Magician activated on him. He's a little slow right now, but it doesn't feel that slow. I know it says 86 speed, 86 Excel, but he just doesn't feel that slow. He feels good to me. Hands are uh, basically lower 90s. Shot is in 91, especially with the wrist shot accuracy being bumped up with Light the Lamp. He's a solid card. He's a great pickup. And I would say he's a probably top middle tier X Factor player. If you do get him in a choice pack, I would certainly pick him up. In our last line, it's the quick speedy boys. Alex Dabrinkit, Ray Ferraro, and Kirill Kaprizov. Let's get right into it here. Now, Dabrinkit, I do have Light the Lamp activated on him. He also has Wingman, so that could potentially make him even faster, as you can see here at a 92 Excel. But even right now, this card is pretty darn fast. 5'7", 165, obviously. He's not the largest person on the ice, but he is quick. And I'm telling you, like if you can get the puck out and you have to leave the zone, early on for your breakouts, he's an OP card. 90 Excel, 90 speed, feels like more mid 90s to me personally. 91 wrist shot accuracy, which coming off that left-hand side is pretty pretty good for sniping. And then lastly, his hands are all low 90s. Pretty good card. Next up is Ray Ferraro. If you watched my Icon Choice video, you'll know, and you should also have him on your team. As I clearly laid out, he is your best option. I have distributor on him. It does increase his speed up to a 90. Guys, close quarters, please activate this. Unless you're playing me, do not activate this if you play me. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Advanced accuracy when taking wrist shots and snapshots in close proximity to the net. As I mentioned before, I'll have a video out later, but the meta this year is playing behind the net and being and taking shots right in and around the net in close quarters is so OP. It's not even funny, especially for Ray Ferraro with the superstar ability of it. It's only five ability points. 100% activate this if you have not already. Lastly, with Ray, 85 faceoffs, which I really do love. He's good on faceoffs, and he's just a great overall card. And lastly, I have Kaprizov. He's awesome. I just love this card. And I just, he's an 87 speed and 87 Excel. Rishon actually is the 89. Hands are about a 90 overall. I just think this card's great and I love the player as a whole. So that's why I have him on my fourth line. Coming up on defense. Now our first line player is Kel McCarr and Victor Hedman. And let's get into these cards. 5'7", 187. He's a little small for a D-man, but boy, is he quick. 91 acceleration, 91 speed. I also have Light the Lamp and Magician activated, but where it really counts is right here at Elite Edges. Exceptional maneuverability with the ability to turn tight corners while retaining high speed. It is absolutely overpowered. Throw that on if you have not. I know it's eight ability points, but he can break out of his zone and get into the offensive zone so easily. It's almost an automatic goal every single time. Hands are solid, low 90s. I wish the shot was a little bit better in mid 80s, but he's a solid card. And if you get this in the next factor pack, he's probably one of the top three defensemen in my opinion. Coming up next is my boy, Victor Hedman, 6'6", 223 both have Magician as well as Light the Lamp activated, and I do have Quick Pick. It, it's unbelievable. Definitely put this on, especially for only two points. It's one of the best superstar abilities in the game. Advanced at intercepting pucks also increases a player's range when intercepting pucks. As you can see, not the fastest card of the game, but his size is really what makes a difference. Slap shot and wrist shot power are both at a 90. His hands are pretty solid, but guys, stick checking, 94. Defensive awareness, 95. Shot blocking, 90, which I don't know how much that really comes into play. Checking is a 90. Strength is a 93. Like, he's just a menace. And especially when you pair him up with a quick, smaller defenseman like Kale McCarr, that's really what I'm trying to help you guys out with here is this is how you play the game. If you have Kale that's breaking out into the offensive zone, you can have Hedman back and you know he's going to be able to hold it down most of the time. So 
Both awesome cards, and it's a great line pair. Our second line defense is Seth Jones and John Carlson. So I did just pick up this Jones. I love this card. I had his base card to start off the game, and I figured, eh, why not? Let's upgrade to a Superstar Origin card. So I got Light the Lamp activated on him. Again, he's a big body, 6'4", 213. His balance is a 90 whenever Light the Lamp is activated. His shot's pretty much mid 80s across the board, except for his power is almost near a 90. Speed is an 88, acceleration is an 87. But again, going back to defense, stick checking is an 88. Defensive awareness is also an 88. I just really love this card. I think it's a great pickup. Playing next to him is John Carlson. Again, I like the bigger bodies on defense for the most part. Now, I normally would like to pair somebody a little bit quicker, but I do have the untradeable version of Carlson, so I figured, eh. I'll throw him out there, and he's pretty solid in this game. I really do like playing with this card. 6'3", 215, pretty much mid 80s across the board. However, his defensive awareness is an 87, as well as his stick checking is an 85. And coming in at our last D pair is Alex Petrangelo and Oliver Ekman Larson. Looking good there, Oliver, and the Vancouver Canucks Uni. So, first up is Petrangelo. He's not a bad card. Um, yeah, I pulled him on tradable. I've had him on the team since I started. I think he was one of the first 83s I pulled. He actually might have been the first 83 overall I pulled. He's a solid card. He has an X factor, so I don't think I'll ever just throw this in unless I maybe upgrade him later on. But for a third line demon, he's pretty solid pickup. Next, we have Oliver Ekman Larson. I do have Magician activated on him. He's 86 Excel, 87 speed. And yeah, I just like playing with his card. He's always had a good card. Kind of like Duchesne and Hall. He's always had a good card in NHL. Lastly, we got my boy James Rupert holding it down, keeping the boys in line at coach. <laughs> his synergy is Thief, so that is active. And then lastly, in goalies, I have Thatcher Demko and Pavel, who also has Thief on. I think it's Frank Kuz. I probably am butchering that. I apologize if I am, but let's get into the synergies. As I mentioned, light the lamp. As you can see, the majority of my forwards have it, as well as actually most of my wingers and a few of my defensemen. So the reason I like this is because it increases balance and hand-eye, but really the main thing is wrist shot accuracy. In offensive awareness, that means your players are gonna be more receptive to getting into the right position, so you can make better plays, especially down low. Next up is distributor. This is OP. Speed is a plus two. Passing is a plus three, especially in this game you need that. And puck control is also a plus three. If you can see who it's on, Ferraro and Kane are already fast to begin with, so it just makes the fast faster. Yager and Matthews, they definitely need it, and Demko, well, doesn't really affect him. Next up is Magician. It gives three deking and three to puck control, which I do like this one. Um, you know, I just, I, I feel that it's maybe not 100% necessary, but I was close to it, so I threw it on. Last but not least is Thief. Now, if I'm you, I would 100% be at least activating Distributor or something that's going to increase speed, but do not forget and do not sleep on Thief. Why? Five plus defensive awareness, which is huge, five to face-offs, and five to stick checking. Especially, like I mentioned before, stick checking in this game, it's not like you hit RB and you're going to be getting a penalty every single time. Stick checking actually works in NHL 22, thankfully. So, this is 100% OP in my opinion, and I would 100% be throwing it on. And lastly, guys, here are the active abilities that we have. As I mentioned before, Puck on a String is eight points. That goes to Patty Kane. Up next is Elite Edges for Kale McCarr. I do have plus five superstar ability with wheels on Jack Eichel. I also have plus five close quarters on Ray Ferraro, which as I mentioned before, is pretty solid. I do have Unstoppable Force on Sid the Kid, which I do like, but I just really am pretty much a filler for the time being. And then Nick Suzuki is a plus three on Quick Draw. And last but not least, we have Quick Pick on Victor Hedman. So guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. I hope this helped you. If you do have any questions, certainly leave them down below. That's the main goal of my channel, is to provide you NHL 22 content that's not only entertaining, but more importantly, in my opinion, most importantly, helpful. I wanna help you win in NHL 22. I want you to have fun, and I want you to build the best team possible. I'm Man Advantage. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, make sure you click subscribe. Talk to you guys soon.